Smite was infinitely more fun during the tank meta when mid laners built defense. Is this guy seriously arguing for dirty bubble meta to come back? Now that's a hot take. That's a hot take. Today, we become legends. All right, I asked and you guys delivered. I made a post on my community tab asking for your guys' hottest takes about Smite and I'm going to be reviewing and potentially roasting some of them depending on how hot they are. But first, today I'd like to talk about our sponsor, a super exciting new third-person MOBA on the market and that's Paragon the Overprime. The game came to be out of the cancellation of the original Paragon when Epic Games released $17 million worth of assets for free on the Unreal Engine marketplace. It was around this time that the developers of Overprime, Soul Leaf Studios, began development on this exciting new game based on the original Paragon. After receiving funding from Netmarble, they could truly go all in on developing Overprime. There's a ton to be hyped about with this release, but here are my top 5 favourite aspects of Overprime. Number 5. Paragon was awesome and Overprime intends to keep the spirit of the original game with some exciting new changes added. Number 4. The game will be entirely free to play, so there's no barrier to entry. You can try out the game with no strings attached. Number 3. The graphics look amazing. They have this sort of realistic style blended with fantasy that really catches the eye. Number 2. Their cinematic trailers look absolutely stunning. I mean, just look at this. And finally, number one, their tutorial is actually really good. This is a bit of a weird one to pick up on. Most games nowadays neglect their tutorial, but Overprime clearly put in a lot of effort to teach new players the basics of the game. So if you want to discover what all the hype is about, check out Paragon the Overprime via my link in the description. Early access will open on December 8th, so be sure to check out the game then before its full release in 2023. And thanks once again to Paragon the Overprime for sponsoring this video. I said it before, but I'll say it again. Baron's Brew should fill back as passive meter. Absolutely. It should fill it to full, honestly. Every time you chug one Baron's Brew, just fall, fall back as passive meter. I'd be down for that. So many of the older gods have passives that would now just be effects on their abilities, like Hades, Freya, and Arachne, etc. It makes them feel bland at times. I feel like passive tweaks on many of the older gods would make them feel so much more dynamic without necessarily being too strong. Yeah, 100% agree with this one. Uh, not necessarily even a hot take. This is just like a, an improvement for the game, I suppose. Uh, probably why it has so many upvotes. It's not really like, no one's really going to disagree with this, to be honest. Having players be limited to only getting either beads or Aegis could make games feel a lot more interesting and fun. There are so many cool relics, yet we always see beads and Aegis. This is interesting. Actually, a somewhat hot take because, of course, the game relies so much around Beads and Aegis that uh, not having one of them would suck. But I guess the, the thing is, like, we already kind of have this in a way with junglers because junglers almost never go Beads Aegis unless like, you're very, very scared of, like, dying to a Poseidon or something like that, maybe. You will go Beats Aegis, but for the most part, junglers always go Beats Blink. Uh, Blink, honestly, I would put in the same category as these. I think Beads, Blink, Aegis are the three by far best relics in the entire game, or at least most used. Because with, with a lot of the support relics, like the AoE teamfight support relics, like Shell, Curse, Frenzy, uh, Horrific Emblem, Sprint, all those kind of ones, like, they have many different options that are all, like, passable or, like, usable in different situations. Like, if you're trying to counter slows, you get a Sprint. If you're trying to, like, uh, counter people with low movement, you get a Horrific Emblem, so you can chase them down really easily. And that dynamic is a whole lot better, which I guess is kind of what this guy's getting at, you know? If we had that kind of dynamic in terms of defensive and squishy relics... Instead of just like beads blink on junglers, beads Aegis on uh, backliners. It could be a lot more interesting. I'm not sure how you would actually implement this in game. Like, would you have to have like relic tiers and like you could only have one tier one relic, which is like beads Aegis blink uh, or something like that. It it'd be a bit weird to implement in game, but I... I'm not necessarily opposed to this. I think it would be interesting. As a player that personally doesn't go Beats Aegis all that often, even on some mid laners, I like to go Beats Blink, especially like Scylla, Hebo, you know, those gods that really use Blink really well. Yeah, it would require some changes to the balance of the game, I think, in general, because no one's going to buy Aegis if you do this, is the, is the kind of the problem with this. Like, it's probably only like 5% of the time or something that you would want Aegis over Beads in a scenario like this, because Beads is just so much better. Like, a lot of abilities that are countered by Aegis are also countered by Beads. Like, a Poseidon Kraken, for example, you just Beads the cripple and walk out of it and that kind of serves a similar effect as just agusing the kraken there's a lot of abilities like that but beats is just universally more useful so if you did a situation like this i think agus would just almost never be bought is kind of the problem with that i suppose you're kind of just removing agus from the game i don't know it's a difficult it's a difficult thing i'm kind of in favor of it but i think in practice implementing it into the game will be very difficult it'd have to be done in a strange way but anyway spent a long time on that one Let, let's move on having simple gods like anubis nox and Duwa are just as important as having ones with many options like tiamat merlin and the morrigan some gods should focus around positioning and hitting a couple of skill shots others can be about maximizing the use of a multiple choice kit absolutely absolutely you know whenever i i make this argument a lot you know like that i love gods like tiamat merlin morrigan all those ones that are like uh, really complex and have a lot 
to do and a lot to maximize, a lot of uh, skill ceiling to kind of push myself further with. Because that's the kind of character I like, but I'm not saying you should delete characters that are simple either. I mean, to be honest, I, I enjoy a bit of Anubis from time to time. I think everyone does. Uh, but yeah, you should obviously have simple gods. One, to get people into the game so they can have a fun time, even if they don't understand like complex mechanics of the game that you might need to play Morrigan. And just for people that want to chill out and have a fun time, you know, even me sometimes, I'll, I'll just want to pick a brain dead god that's like really easy to play. I don't actually have to think about what I'm doing. Like sometimes that's fun. So yeah, absolutely. We should have uh, gods that are like simple as well as complex. You should have the full range. And I think we kind of do in Smite. To be honest, I think Smite is a little bit skewed towards the simple gods. Uh, this might be a bit of a hot take. I think they should do a more complex gods. I feel like maybe 10% of the gods in the game are like truly kind of complex with a lot of skill dynamics. Uh, and I think it should be more like 33, 33, 33 in terms of like low skill, me medium skill, high skill. You know, you look at other MOBAs like League, for example. In League, there's a lot of champions that are like very in-depth and very hard to like maximize and, and play really well. And I feel like Smite could do with a few more of those. The old risky stacking Doom Orb and Heartseeker where you died if you lost half your stacks was fun AF. They should bring back that style of item. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I agree with this. They would have to keep them reasonably balanced because as we all know, Season 2 Heartseeker was very broken and it made Hunters super strong because you could get 70 power for like... 1800 gold I think it was back then maybe 1950 or something like that that doesn't sound that insane in modern smite but for a hunter one very good because they have 100% auto attack scaling and two the power level was a bit lower back in season two uh season two heart seeker was truly an insane item sorry I was late but I really hope you do this one uh, I will I will don't worry because I really want your opinion on this Geb3 and Kepriol have built this mindset of teammates to make poor decisions and positioning because they think they'll be saved in a way it subconsciously promotes it uh yeah this is more true of Aphroditeal, in my opinion. A lot of people really crutch on Aphroditeal uh, and Kepri as well. The thing is with Geb3, it doesn't like save you from terrible positioning necessarily. Um, but Aphroal and Geb3, I mean Aphroal and Kepriol, sorry, because Kepriol re literally revives you and Aphroal makes you completely immune while you can also heal from the three and stuff. So it doesn't make them bad designs or anything. But yeah, I suppose it does promote poor positioning in, in, in a way. But it can also promote very interesting positioning where like you deliberately go way too far into the enemy backline to try and trade yourself for a kill and you get Kepri ulted straight back to the backline because you can make plays like that. Artios 2 in Druid form is not bad. Y'all are just using your dashes and jumps as a free escape whenever you miss position or get overconfident. Nah, nah, I disagree with this one. Th the game is kind of built around having dashes and jumps at this point. Like 80% of the characters have them in this game and the ones that don't, you, you kind of have to play a little bit differently or they have some kind of like movement speed buff or whatever. And RTO 2 is, is just annoying, dude. It, it shouldn't last as long as it does because you can just just continually stay on you and then you can't jump away is so annoying like i'm usually on the side of tanks when everyone's complaining about like tank metas and and how tanks deal way too much damage and have way too much cc but the rto 2 in druid form that that really is a problem tank ability in my opinion i missed the way old deathbringer and old warded dahuti worked i like when hit crit hit like a truck but the items weren't so stat bloated back then there weren't any attack speed crit items i also liked how bursty mage builds were i'd rather than be super bursty but then makes tanks extra tanky but i'm just a smite boomer yeah i agree with this uh, i think this this might be a hot take to some modern smite players but tanks should be tanky again man like tanks should be tanky again the problem with tanks at the moment i'm gonna go on a tank rant here like i always do in my videos basically tanks over time have become less tanky but still dealing like a similar amount of damage and like people complain that tanks deal damage but the problem is tanks are having to build damage items to compete because if you just build full tank in modern smite you just get deleted and because you deal no damage with a full tank build like if you got a genuine full tank build with like even a starter that's like tanky, like Hero's Axe or something, you will just get deleted by uh, by shredding hunters and mages with Obsidian Shard and Soul Reaver that every single mage has in their build. Probably even more percent pen than that, let's be real. Uh, whereas back in Smite's old days, you could build full tank and like not get instantly deleted because mages had way less percent pen options. Even hunters had less ways to shred you. Like even crit builds nowadays shred tanks on hunters, which is just kind of insane. And I guess that's kind of what this guy's talking about. Like the the crit items are insanely stat bloated right now. I percent agree with that like shadow steel shuriken wind demon of course once you get that crit it's got like five different stats on it that hunters all want like attack speed percent pen crit chance power what what don't you want from wind demon basically but yeah tank ran over let's move on there needs to be more bridge items like stone of binding yeah 100 i've been saying this for a long time basically ever since they started removing the tier two items or, or and or making them into tier threes i think tier three uh tier two bridge items are really cool support is by far the most difficult role it's not by far the most difficult uh i think honestly jungle is slightly more difficult than support in my opinion just ever so slightly but even if support was my most difficult role jungle would not be far behind uh, those two roles are 
decently above the other roles in terms of difficulty. In, in my opinion, it goes jungle support, very close to each other. Mid a little bit behind those, because you have like a little bit more to do in terms of your brawling early in the game. You, you got like control a lot of the jungle camps around the mid lane, you got a lot to do. And then side lanes come after that, which are about even in each other. We need more viable mage jungle and ADCs, more hunter mage, potentially some physical guardian too. Yeah, I'm hella down for that. Uh, I've long been an advocate for off roll picks and stuff like that. And also just in general, like we should have more unique mages. T way too many mages in Smite are just generic burst damage mages that go in the mid lane. It's actually insane that like that's by far the largest class in the game and like 80%, 80 80 to 90 percent of them are just boring generic burst mages that are all the fucking same character basically uh we should have some more interesting designs in there with like some kind of enchanter-esque supporty mages with like high cc or high uh like buffs and debuffs utility stats that kind of stuff and way more magical like assassins i can't believe we basically just have one magical assassin unless you count hebo that's actually insane having relic limits like two or three beads agus etc to a team will be a cool addition especially with all the survivability and dr changes they've made yeah no this is a terrible way to do it. I talked about this uh, in one of the earlier ones, and I'm not necessarily opposed to limits on Beats and Aegis, but this is a horrible way to do it. Only two or three per team, so what, like the first two or three people to buy beads in the fountain are the only ones that are allowed to have beads in that game. That's terrible. That's awful. The ban system works perfectly and can tell the difference between purposeful disconnects and lagging out slash crashing. I don't really know what this means. It sounds like sarcasm, but of course the ban system doesn't know the difference between that. It's, it's impossible to tell that as far as I know on like a technological side. Like how can you tell if someone's internet went down or if they pulled the ethernet cable out of their computer? You, you just can't. Also my own hot take, if you consistently queue up for smite games with internet that makes you disconnect in like one out of three games, you, you probably just to get banned. Fixing slash adjusting older gods should be prioritized over releasing new gods. The game is a mess and I'm tired of new gods being bu uh, released with busted kits that have no holes whilst older gods having to buy certain items or relics to be decent. So this... I mean, kind of in a way, I agree with this, but for the most part, I don't. Like, they have to release new gods because it brings, like, a ton of hype to the game, and I, I I, want new gods to be released, like, personally. But I do think they should put a little bit more focus on, like, sprucing up some of the old gods, as I've kind of mentioned with uh, one of the previous ones that I discussed in this video. But, like, gods having, gods having, like, synergies with certain items and relics isn't necessarily, like, a bad thing. Like, Nox having to buy cooldown reduction, that's just how Nox works. That's not necessarily, like, a bad thing. And, like, Nemesis with beads, I assume he means that because she has no CC immunity on the ult. Like, many characters don't have CC immune ults. And Artemis with movement and cooldowns, you don't build cooldown reduction on Artemis. I'm very confused at this guy. Ranked Conquest should not be limited to two, pl two player parties and say it should be five and would allow for a more competitive experience while having less toxicity. And they should also make it so that parties of three to five will fight another team with the same number of members. So in theory, I agree with this, but in practice, it just kind of wouldn't work because the ranked Conquest player base isn't really big enough to support this. Like a lot of the time, if you're queuing in as a five man, there physically won't be another five man in the queue like that's around your elo that you could actually like queue into. Because it's kind of hard to find like all five members that are like around the same skill level so that they can queue up for ranks together. Like I'm not sure how, how close you have to be in ranks nowadays, but you have to be relatively close in ranks in MMR. And so like getting all five people of like similar level to be able to queue up, it's very hard. So you often just wouldn't find like an actual game of five people to queue you into. And then at that point, if you're a five man premier queuing into like a three and a two, you have a massive advantage in that so like it will be very difficult to work i think danza Burrow support is very fun and is more effective than it seems really i mean he has a taunt and a stun i guess i don't i don't really see this working to be honest meta builds are overrated and using them in every match really hurts you as a player counter building is more important than making sure you leave room for obsidian shard and soul reaver um so i kind of get what he's saying with this but like i i disagree for the most part I mean, meta builds will not hurt you as a player. Meta builds are the meta build for a reason. They're the best thing you can build. Obviously, you should adjust those meta builds to include counter items if you need them. But, uh, I mean, he's mentioning Obsidian Shard and Sorry, but mage builds rarely change. Mage and ADC builds very rarely change in terms of what you... Like, you don't really counter build that much other than, like, picking up a bit of anti-heal or maybe a magi sometimes. Like, you can pretty much get away with building the same build every single game on, on a hunter or a mage, uh, rarely needing to change it. The boost removal was bad for the game. It makes it harder for new players to learn the game and harder for the team to balance the game. No, I don't agree with this. I think boost removal was pretty good for the game. It just removed, like, a kind of somewhat pointless way of, like scaling from the early game if anything i would say for like very new players it makes it easier because new players wouldn't build boots a lot of the time like they would just like rush into a stacking item or something and never buy boots or like at least buy boots later in their build when like one of their teammates told them to buy it or something and then they would just get absolutely destroyed because like they wouldn't be able to move like they would just get run down by people that do have boots i think it probably makes it easier for new players actually and it makes it harder for the team to balance the game i can kind of see where he's coming from with this in terms of like i guess he means your items come online earlier so like the differences between the item like balance wise is going to be like coming online earlier so for example 
Book of Thoth really strong right now. Book of Thoth comes online first item instead of after your boots. It's like a little bit harder to balance because you're getting that power spike earlier in the game rather than everyone being on a similar power level until boots are finished. So I kind of get that in a way, but uh, nah, boots removal wasn't bad for the game. Siege was a better game mode than Slash because of Siege being 4v4. Queuing Siege with one person was so fun because it guaranteed learning together. Yeah, I 100% agree with this. I really like Siege, man. I don't necessarily hate Slash. I think Slash is alright, but uh, it's too much like Clash and not enough like Siege for me because I really enjoyed Siege a lot more than I enjoyed Clash. You know, Clash to me just felt like Arena with a few extra steps, whereas Siege really felt like its own game mode, to be honest. And yeah, as this guy said, just being able to queue up with one person, which is often like I'm just on with one person, like being able to queue up for Siege and just having like a duel in together was really cool. I really hate mirror matches in casual and wish Hyros would implement a system so that mirror matchups are impossible. Go play ranked. There should be a way to choose between an old version or the current version of a reworked character that would be hard to balance for possible to do. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> Being able to play release Guan Yu or like pre-rework Guan Yu. No, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, pre-rework Ratatoska with the broken acorns. You know, there's so many ways this could be insanely stupid. He said it should be a guardian. And no, it doesn't work that great since she has one of the lowest health and protections out of most of the mages, ignoring her shield and heal from the ult. I saw one earlier that I didn't actually cover saying Nox should be a guardian as well. Why, why, do, why do they need to be guardians? It's fine for them to be mages that are also kind of viable in support. Like, it doesn't have to be that anything that's viable in support needs to be changed into a guardian. The ban system in Ranked Conquest is terrible. 99% of the time, both teams ban the same 2-3 to three gods. So instead of the usual 10 bans, we only get 5-7 to seven bans. That's not an issue with the ranked ban system. That's just how bans work. That's just how humans work. Like 99% of the time, both teams ban the same two or three gods. That's because they're the best gods in the meta. Of course, you're going to ban those. Like changing the, the ban system wouldn't alleviate this problem. That's just how bans will always work. People are always going to ban the best characters or the characters they don't want to play against the most. There should be an extra mode for every map without beats and Aegis. What, you want to split the play base even more than it already is across like eight different game modes and like five different regions? Now let's split it across two different main primary things with Beads and Aegis? Nah, that's a stupid idea. Sounds like this person's just salty about Beads and Aegis uh, denying their Krakens or something. Hera is a viable support. Maybe close, to be honest. The Polymorph is really good. She has a big knockup. Uh, she can shield to keep herself alive. If she could shield her teammates somehow, maybe she, she'd be a decent support. I wouldn't say viable, but like you can maybe make it work in like lower levels. Old Assault map was way better and more visually pleasing than the current one is. Adding healing buff was a mistake. Uh, I highly disagree with both points here. The healing buff is nice because it just means like healers aren't so like prioritized. Like if you don't have a healer in Assault, the game plays completely differently. Whereas like with the healing pods, it's like you can kind of sustain up still if you don't have like good self-sustain or a healer. And then visually, the new Assault map, this is my hot take. The new Assault map is the best looking map in the entire game. I love how it looks. The one thing I did like about the old map was the Skull and Hattie like chasing uh, the sun and moon through the sky. I think that was like a really cool like lore aspect of it that I don't think is in the new map as far as I know. But the new map is one of the most visually pleasing maps in the entire game in my opinion. I don't know how anyone can say it's not. Smite was infinitely more fun during the tank meta when mid laners built defense. Is this guy seriously arguing for Dirty Bubble meta to come back? Now that's a hot take. That's a hot take. No, I mean, I'm, an, I'm as big an advocate for making tanks better than they are at the moment, but like, uh, I don't know if we should be going back to the Dirty Bubble meta, dude. I don't know about that one. Every god should get a rework after a certain amount of time. We're really getting down to the bottom of the barrel hot takes at this point, dude. No, not every god needs a rework. That's stupid. Some gods are well designed and they don't necessarily need to be changed. In fact, most of the gods are well designed and don't need change. I would say like 80, 80 to 90% of the gods will never need a rework because their kits are just well designed. Like updating them with maybe like an extra mechanic here or there or some numbers buffs. Yeah, for sure. But uh, like a major rework that actually changes their playstyle. Nah, not, not every god needs that. The current map is worse than the maps from season 5 to 7. It's too large, so lanes like solo and duo feel like a duel for too long. It's harder to suppress a specific size in the map and kind of killed the ghost gaming style of smite also just bring back early invading it's way more interesting to watch so there's quite a few hot takes here uh the map being better than season five to seven i think they're about the same to be honest not not too much is really like drawing me in either direction in that regard uh it's too large so lanes like solo and duo feel like they're a duel for too long nah i think if anything uh there's not enough like 1v1ing in, in smite like it feels like the lanes are way too close and you're always in fear of like, getting ganked you can't really like actually have a nice 1v1 with your enemy solo or enemy uh adc you're just going to get ganked immediately if you try and push up and pressure them. And also just bring back early invading. It's way more interesting to watch. I am personally down for like a little bit of alleviation on the early invade meta. We don't necessarily need to go back to where invading is like always the best strat. Like and people at lower levels are doing it. Like personally, I think invade meta in the SPL is really fun to watch. But the problem is people kind of copy what is done in SPL. And if you get a, an infestation of invade metas in the lower levels, it makes the game kind of unfun to play. So it's a very like 
You're kind of balancing on the edge of a knife at that point. Letting Changa's rabbit deliver items from the base to her teammates, but she has to pay with her own gold. She could buy wards or pots for her team while they're learning. I think it could be a fun interactive mechanic. Please don't do this. This is horrible. <laughs> this will be like that Loki strat that you used to be able to do back in Assault, where you would Loki decoy the way behind the enemy tower so your teammates won't be in range of it, and you get the full Assault minion wave value, which is like 500 per minion wave. And you would just do that for like, seven minion waves die and have like three full items ahead of everyone else this would happen in conquest or like any game mod Chango would just never buy any items herself and just keep herself safe and then just pump up her jungler or something so he has like five items when everyone else has two and then he's just one shotting everyone this would be horrible this is how has this got 11 up for us dude what the hell i don't understand why everyone mocks the idea of aphrodite being played as a support when literally all of her abilities are support uh it's mocked because not all of her abilities are support uh the way support works in smite is not healing people that's that's not what supports do as like their primary purpose some supports have like healing as their secondary capability but supports in smite are big tanky frontline or backline ccers and, and peelers whereas aphrodite she can peel but she can't like really cc or anything once, once you burn afro's ult and you have some anti heal she doesn't do anything like to actually help the backline uh whereas like cc and stuff it's way harder to counter reporting system should be improved overhauled or redesigned and overall more punishing i get that perma banning someone whose internet was down for two minutes that one singular time would not be fair i mean yeah that doesn't happen like they get like a small ban but if they keep queuing up with their internet going down repeatedly they're gonna get a longer and longer ban and that just kind of makes sense however the sheer amount of trolls rage quitters intentional feeders is astounding to me my idea would be to lose 50 percent of your gems and favor when banned for the first offense and 100 percent when banned for the second offense bruh imagine the lawsuits dude you, you buy like some some gems i'm not sure if it would actually be illegal so maybe not lawsuits but imagine the complaints you buy like an 8k gem pack and then you accidentally like dc from a few games and you lose all your gems oh uh, that would be funny it'd be funny to see people raging on reddit that they lost all their gems but nah this this would be a terrible idea change fen passive to be effect on his two and give him a new passive yeah i'd be down for that personally if your god is performing better in an off role than their designated role i.e assassin supports they should be nerfed in their off role and buffed to make their main role better nothing wrong with different classes in different roles but they should be the strongest in the role that they were designed for does this guy work at high res or something i feel like this is absolutely just the high res mindset described in a few sentences uh, i completely disagree with this i i think characters should be designed in the flavor of their class they should not be designed in the flavor of like a certain conquest role i think it's silly that like to be a warrior you have to be a solo laner primarily to, to be a warrior you should be a warrior uh, and if it turns out that you're better in jungle or you're better in support because of that that's just cool. I like that. I think that's a cool idea. There are no OP gods in casual, only OP players with gods. So to a certain extent, I actually do agree with this. I think in casual game modes, the actual differences between the power level of certain gods and items is, is way less. Like a diamond player will, with the worst god in the game will probably be a platinum player with the best god in the game most of the time. Like a lot of the time, player skill does actually matter more than um, like the actual like strength of the gods and items. They should add all chat during the games. Yeah, I'd be down for all chat, man. I think that'd be funny. Smite is a good game. Hottest take of them all. Yeah, apparently that is a hot take nowadays. So many people just saying Smite is a terrible game and yet they still continue to play it and support it smite is a good game i agree uh it has some issues but i, but I enjoy smite i enjoy smite and hopefully some of those issues will be addressed in season 10 we'll see but uh, i think that's going to be where i'm going to end this video at. i've been recording for around like 45 minutes now the video won't be that long i'm going to cut out some of the ones that were like less interesting and cut out the uh, dead space in between where i'm looking for cool ones but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this one uh, if you want to see more of these definitely do let me know it's always fun to like review some of your guys hot takes and sometimes there's an occasional reddit posts as well and i review random redditors hot takes which is also very funny and yeah don't forget to drop a like on the video before you leave if you enjoyed it and i will catch you guys in another one later on have a great day and peace out you nerds